Good day, traders. The four-step method to high-performance trading and the free audio program, the seven-step daily routine for high-performance traders, are both free downloads to help you develop the skill set, the mindset, the discipline to master the markets. The link is down below in the box, the description box. They're both free downloads. Let's get started. Hello and welcome, traders. Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. Today I'm going to be talking about one of my mentors and one of my fundamental underlying approaches to trading and the power of executing best trade setups in the session that you're trading and understanding what that means. Peter Brandt has been a mentor to me for many years now and Peter is a classical chartist. I talked about Peter several times and talked about getting his books he studied Schaubacher's book, Richard Schaubacher, which you'll notice here, Schaubacher's book, uh, Stock Market Technical Analysis and Stock, Stock Market Profits, was written in 1932. And Peter's been trading the markets for 40 plus years, and I've learned several powerful concepts from Peter, but most importantly, the critical nature of being a master craftsman and knowing that the charts themselves do not predict or guarantee anything other than identifying the possibility of a market that potentially has an asymmetrical risk reward trading opportunity. And you can follow Peter on Twitter, uh, get his books, study his material. Uh, he has a wealth of knowledge, but also an extremely grounded master craftsman psychological approach to trading the markets. I reiterate that it's your daily process each day that will help you identify the best trade setups that are in the playbook. And there are other trades that can be taken, but I reinforce the concept of not trying to just buy the low and sell the high and get pips. My approach to the market is to identify an opportunity that is a 90-10 high possibility for a scalable, sizable trade setup. And what that means, I often hear traders talk about, oh, the market's not moving much today, or it only went 25 pips or 50 pips. But I think those traders, the retail mindset is that I need to get a lot of pips. And I've explained this over and over again. My objective is to identify trade setups that can be scaled into with size. Lock in the money and walk away. A high probability opportunity where the market is about to explode. 25, 50, maybe 150 pips. But locking that in with some size, adding size into it taking the money off the table and walking away. One of my other mentors, Alex Temez, also showed me the power of sizing up into your best trade setups. These are one day trades and these are scalable, highly profitable trading opportunities from this most recent week. Alex trades one hour a day, the New York session. So I reinforce some simple concepts. The three things that markets do, they break out, they pull back and they trend, or they break out, they pull back and reverse, they have failed breakouts, or they trade between a high and a low in a trading range. And one of the most important, powerful things that I learned from Peter was to define your consolidation. Now, Peter trades on longer time frames, but I've mentioned this over and over again. He has a lot of failed breakout trades. Now, if classical charting has a lot of failed breakouts, what can that tell us about certain markets? When we have a day evolve or three sessions evolving, consolidating and forming trading opportunities heading into the new trading session. We have three sessions a day, Asia, London, and New York. If we have a market that shows weakness, and breaks down and has a break in structure, we may now have a market that is potentially going to pump and dump. When a market 
reaches the high or low of that consolidation. That is the area where it can become most vulnerable. You can trade in both directions. The question I always have for traders is, if you're trading against a broken market, is it a sizable opportunity or is the size opportunity in the direction of the break, the collapse? Entirely your choice, but it's important to understand where the money can be made and where you can size in. In the playbook, we talk about going to smaller time frames. That allows us the opportunity to then potentially get a better stop, a better fill price and a tighter stop. And again, we talked about the levels. We talked about 100 pip boxes. A market breaks out of a weekly high. 25 to 50 pips above the range. It breaks structure in the Asian session. It then proceeds to pump up and trigger breakouts. A great question from a trader was, if a market just touches a level, is that considered a reset? No. Coming back to Peter's charts, Peter uses monthly, weekly charts. You'll notice that his lines that define his boundaries are on the outside. He's a classical breakout trader. He's trading the geometrical structures. These consolidations, whether they're on a 15-minute chart or a monthly chart, define where our boundaries are each and every day. He's not trying to trade the direction inside catching a move. He's looking for the larger breakout expansion for one full or two full expansions of the range depending on the pattern that he's trading. So I repeat the phrase that I use over and over again, price is in a box. We have smaller boxes, which Peter would call patterns within a pattern. And then we have a larger box, which defines our rectangle, our geometrical structure. Now currently we have smaller structures heading into a new session that gave a nice 50 pip trade in the open of the New York session. Which brings me to my next important point. So we had a nice opportunity for a first bounce entry at 75 heading into our end of the first hour in the New York session on gold. First bounce similar to the major news release, but market breaks out, pulls back, and continues its move down for a nice 50 pip trade. So traders understand the power of sizing into a best trade setup. This is a repeatable opportunity. And I mentioned in my community post that the New York Open should capitulate into the target. But the power of sizing in, instead of just trading and getting directions and trading all day and calling highs and lows and catching moves back and forth, sizing in, instead of taking 10 trades, take one trade with 10 times the size. Still managing my risk, a nice tight stop above the peak formation high. Once it broke the swing low, being able to adjust that position to break even, the gap in that break between the pin and the peak formation is an area to add into con add contracts into that move and then locking in the money and walking away not trying to keep trading all day size in take the money and walk away each day being able to have a process that allows you to identify a potential market for an opportunity. Three levels of rise. 25, 25, 25. A break in structure. Now this market was an inside day. The previous day, this is the Euro. And understanding that if a market does not behave the way that we expect for a best trade setup, that that isn't the ideal candidate. With a break in structure, we, we want to see the pump up back up into the failed breakout for the 50 pip move back down and understanding that they've already triggered breakout traders from the previous day's high. That's our inside bar trade from the playbook. And if that market pumps up for the collapse, we know there are stops down at the low of the inside day. That market did not, it fell down lower, getting traders chasing that move. Now, if you were short, 
into this market, you still had one hour, one hour to close that trade. Expecting the market should have capitulated, it went sideways for 45 minutes. So again, recognizing that if the trade is not behaving as you expect, to be able to close it out before it comes back, hits your stop, takes you over the loss, whatever that may be, this market should have broke down fast and furious into the traders that were long from the U.S. session the night before. So coming back just to a simple process again about defining our geometrical structures. Heading into the close of the day, we have a consolidation, a high-low. High of London, low of the U.S. session. That market then proceeded to auction higher and redefine our boundaries. A higher high and a lower low. We now have a break in structure on the inside. That is the formula for the pump and dump. Now that market for traders who shorted the failed breakout in the London window were able to grab 25 to 40 pips. The low hanging fruit in the U.S. session, as I just mentioned, would have been a pump up to the breakout for the fall down through the low of the day. This market got traders shorting down low before the explosive reversal trade back up to the high of the day. So again, higher highs, we had a lower low, we redraw our boundaries, redraw our boundaries, we have our U.S. session low. The market made a high, continued to go higher before breaking down in one push, two pushes, and a third push into traders that were long in the U.S. session without following through. So again, recognizing when the trade does not behave in line with a best trade setup execution. We had a first red day opportunity on the Canadian dollar. First red day is a high of the day selling opportunity if the market sets up in that manner. When we head into the close of the session, as I clearly state in the playbook, we draw our consolidation, our consolidation high-low. A first red day is a day that closes below the open and a first red day trade setup is after we have our pump day. We have our pump day we have a market then that gives us our first red day and you'll notice the market pumps up into the breakout the breakout from the US session through the low of the Asian and London sessions after breaking out of the high of the week collapsing pumping up into the breakout and then working into the low of the day in three pushes before pumping up in one push, two push, three pushes, and an engulfment, and on the smaller time frame, as per our entry rules in the playbook, we have a market that gave an explosive first red day trade setup, which again coming back to just taking a geometrical structure high and low for at least a 100% expansion of the range, and we could still see a completion on a second expansion if traders are leaving a trailer in that market for a very profitable asymmetrical risk reward trade opportunity. What I would like to emphasize to traders is that there is nothing new under the sun. These are not new concepts. There is no such thing as smart money concepts. There is behavior of markets and the market participants. We have trend trades, reversal trades, and trading ranges. That is the only three things that markets do. We can look at the S&P. We have a large dump day. That market continued down and still closed as a red day. But we have a market that broke structure and again heading into the close of our session, we draw our consolidation. Large moves come out of consolidations. I repeat that phrase over and over again. Large moves come out of consolidations. We have a market that stays in consolidation inside of the Asian session. So we have our larger consolidation, then we have a pattern within a pattern, a higher high, a break of structure on the inside, 
can begin the process for a potential pump and dump. Market triggers the low but gives us a break in structure again on the inside. Not trading this. We're waiting for the larger break of structure for the U.S. session trade. This is a U.S. index market. We have a move to the low and our little pin hammer reversal at the New York Open. Again, the importance of timing. And you'll notice these are major quarter levels. Major quarter levels. So we have our geometrical structure, a high low range, a higher high into the close of our session. If we take one full expansion of the range as a minimum target, we have hit that and potentially will hit a second full expansion of the range at the beginning of the week. Classical charting principles. Again, they do not guarantee anything, but when we align our best trade setup thesis with the sessions that we're trading and we master our craft in terms of identifying the consolidations and staying out of the chop, knowing when to size in, making money from the best trade opportunities, locking it in and getting off the screen. These are all repeatable, scalable trade opportunities. We don't need to sit here all day catching a move and going back and forth and trying to get short and get long and bought the low, sold the high. Where is my best opportunity to scale in with size? Is this a session trade or is this a potential larger scalable geometrical asymmetrical risk reward opportunity? Focus on mastering your craft traders just like Peter Brandt, Schaubacher, Alex Tamez. This is a winnable game. You can grow your account. You can manage your risk. You can have low stress, zero emotion trading when you know exactly what you're looking for and you take the time to mark your levels, to plan, prepare, and execute your best trade setups. Keep it going, traders. Keep it growing. Keep it growing. Size matters. Pips don't matter. Size matters. Have a great weekend, traders, and may the markets go with you.